Chris Petri here. Welcome, everyone. Hey, we're going to have a fun time today. We're doing ink and wash. As you can see from this picture right here, we're going to do a really exciting, fun painting, carefree. This is a great painting if you want to loosen up, if you're trying to loosen up your watercolor washes and your watercolor paintings. Uh, this is a great way to do it. You have fun. You get some paper, some ink, sketch in some pencil lines, get some uh, darks in there with the ink, and then go over top with some watercolor washes. You'll see here in this uh, video as we go, step by step uh, with the process that we use, how you can get a really fun, uh, simple kind of look to uh, your watercolor paintings, loose look, uh, carefree. Um, so anyone that's trying to loosen up a little bit, try a few of these out. These are a lot of fun. We're going to do more in the future here on my channel, just like this painting. Um, and we've done in, you know, we've done these paintings in the past as well, too. So we'll continue to work on doing some really fun, uh, carefree style uh, ink and wash paintings. And uh, so we'll get started in just a second. All right, so we're getting right back into things here where we just saw the finished uh, ink and wash painting. Uh, I hope you really enjoy that uh, first few minutes where you can take a look at the painting, finish painting. This way you kind of prepare yourself uh, as you um, get ready to do this project. You kind of look at everything. You see how uh, the colors look, the uh, tonal values, you know, how much white paper is there maybe, uh, the darks, you know, how's the dark shapes looking and so forth. So you kind of get a good feel for the overall look of the painting and then we can continue on. So um, I'm just going to tape uh, the uh, border of my watercolor paper here. This is uh, Arches uh, satin paper. So I'm just going to use some wide artist tape for the bottom. So I'll always usually put a wider um, border at the bottom of my uh, watercolor paper if I'm doing like a vertical portrait style uh, orientation for my paper. So And then I'll use like a three quarter inch wide artist tape for the uh, top and the side borders here. If you find that you don't do a lot of matting and framing of your paintings, then this is a good way to sort of get a natural uh, matte border around your paintings. So I just seal the very inner border of the tape, just so that no water leaks underneath the tape. And then what we'll do is, I'll find a pen, a marker, and we'll just do our normal um, hash marks around the composition just so we kind of get a feel for where we're going to have things. Um, so I'll make the buildings over here about three quarters of the way up. Top buildings, I abbreviate buildings, top buildings. You can make your own notes however you like, abbrevi abbreviate things. And um, maybe over here, they're just the other side over here, maybe a little lower. And then we'll just put uh, distant building. So this one's just a little bit lower maybe in the distance over here. This is closer to us. Um, I 
those two points seem to be really important in the composition and then maybe also in the foreground here let's say let's say over here this might be okay this might be the uh, bottom of building so we have the building on the right perhaps an apartment building the street coming in um, distant building over here make a hash mark there top of building here and uh, that looks pretty good so that's all we really need we're gonna have this is gonna be a fun ink and wash we're gonna have a good time no stress on this one we're gonna try to just do everything straightforward um, first thing we do is our pencil sketch so what I'm gonna do is just kind of sketching the basic idea of things so I'm gonna do the building over here and just make it a little bit of a maybe not just a straight line maybe a couple little small turns and bends in the lines on the front on the bottom portion of this here and then maybe just like a, a curved line, uh, like a curb line here where the sidewalk is. And uh, maybe a sketch out a few things here. So this would just be the distant portions of the street maybe over here. And then maybe over here about... We're just going to make some sketchy pencil lines over here. Again, we're having fun. We're going to do ink and wash here. So this is more just some fun stuff. We're not going to be too accurate with everything. We're just going to, that's going to be a distant building over here. Maybe some windows. And maybe some some trees over here and branches. I just want to sketch it in a little so I remember when I'm painting. And then uh, here we have some chimneys and chimney pots there. Just some sketchy lines just to remember we're going to put windows in here maybe a door here or two sketchy lines uh, we're not we're not really trying to get super accurate just sketching in some ideas because we're going to put darks we're going to put the inks here where we're putting our uh, our ink and wash we're doing our inks our darks so that's going to be where i'm kind of sketching so just to remember we're, we're just trying to sketch out some ideas and then over here, there's going to be maybe a, a road going through this area. So there's another, maybe another building over here. There's another building over here in the distance. And uh, maybe a... couple of chimneys too as well over there and 
and maybe a shed roof over here and then maybe we'll put another building in front here this will kind of give us a little more uh, A little depth in the a little more depth in the painting if we put a maybe a, another house maybe this could be like a house or a cottage or something here in the front this gives us more of a feeling of depth and then um, maybe there's some bushes and things here there we go so you can kind of see we're building layers distant houses and then we're drawing closer to us here with maybe a cottage perhaps another chimney or two over here and I think that's pretty good and then we have the flow of the maybe we'll put some figures in here Maybe a figure or two over here. Okay, and then maybe I'll take my ruler uh, here just to do a couple of telephone poles, telephone uh, communication poles and some lines. We, that'll add some interest to this. So. I'll lightly do this though, very lightly, because we're going to go over that with our ink and wash. And then maybe another one here. Maybe this one will do like this. This will go up higher, like so. And we'll put a couple. And then we'll just a couple more pencil lines just to indicate where we're going to put some more of those um, communication lines and the telephone poles just so we have a feel for that. Maybe there's another one over here in the distance here. And that's going to go across there behind there maybe like that and over here. And that will just give us more depth and layering in the painting again with our three-dimensional feel of everything kind of going into the distance the buildings go into the distance over here maybe there's another another communications pole there some more wires and things and there's some bushes over here that's the roadway And we're just going to put some more bushes over here. Maybe a couple uh, windows over here. Maybe a window over here. And then over here, another window. Again, I'm doing this sketchy because I'm not getting really fussy with the details. Just sketching in, uh, sketching in the ideas. And I'm just improv on this. You know, um, you know, I might have a picture in front of me of um, something from a book, let's say, or online. You can use some pic. You can take any kind of picture um, and use sort of like the picture, the photograph of, let's say, a city street of, you know, any favorite city of yours that you visited or um, vacation, so on and so forth. You can use those pictures and then you're just going to take that picture and rough sketch like I did here very loosely some of the features in there some shapes of the roofs and you can change things around a little um whatever you know just to the main thing is we're going to do ink and wash so that's going to be really powerful and that's going to really make a an exciting bold picture with the dark black ink and so we're going to do that when we come back we'll start the ink we'll do that first and then we'll go over the top with our light watercolor washes and you'll see it's going to be really beautiful so let's take a quick break for maybe 10 15 minutes and then we'll come back and uh, we'll start on our ink portion. And then after that, we'll do our washes, our watercolor washes over the ink.
Okay, so we had a quick break and uh, we're back. We're going to actually start on our ink uh, portion of our ink and wash here. I uh, just wanted to mention, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Come on by. Come uh, to our site every week. There's new paintings we're doing in watercolor. We do, uh, you know, every kind of imaginable um, subject matter. We do boats and seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes, street scenes, figure work. We'll do ink and washes. We create all kinds of different interesting um, uh, water-based media. So, uh, you know, come by, check it out. Um, and I uh, hope you will subscribe, and this way you don't miss out on any of the fun here. So we're going to, again, uh, start out with our, um, our ink now. So we're going to put our ink portion onto the page, onto our paper. And I have a small cup. This is like a uh, measuring cup. <clears throat> and uh, some speedball ink. Super black indie ink. And then usually what I will do is put just only about a small portion in the bottom of the um, ink uh, well here. This uh, small cup, measuring cup. Maybe about a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch of uh, ink. So be very careful when you're working with ink. Make sure you have, um, if you work in your uh, it's best to have maybe uh, towels, um, old towels or an old, um, uh, some old bed sheets or something you could put on the floor just in case you, you drop this or something. I know this can really ruin furniture and things, so be really careful when you work with your India ink when doing ink and wash. Um, I would wear uh, a smock too as well if you can, or your clothes. You'd want to wear clothes that you wouldn't mind if you splash a little bit of uh, ink on your clothes. You're not going to worry about it too much. Um, and uh, we're going to start out and we'll use our, let's do our smaller details first. And we'll say the light's coming from the right. So the, the light's coming from here. We could put our light insignia here, and then we'll put some shadowing. This is where we have some fun. And then you just dip dip your, um, this is a bamboo pen. It's got a, a medium and a small size on either end. And these come in all sizes. So I'm going to do the windows here too as well. And uh, when I run out, I go back in, I dip just, you know, into the ink and then I tap the, the bamboo pen. I don't want to have tons of ink flooding out onto the sketch, you know, that we're doing here. We want to keep the ink minimal on our pen so that we don't flood to make too many puddles with the ink. And the ink will slowly flow into the fibers of the paper as we're working. So, And I would say with ink and wash you, you're going to want to start on one side of the paper and then work your way across so that you don't lean into the to the ink. That's the best uh, best way. So if you're left-handed, you'd start on the right side of the page and work this way. I'm right-handed, so I'm going left to right across. And you can also do you can do these um, you can do these uh, ink and wash um, details, you know, at a couple passes. So you can do maybe a few like this, like we're doing now, some smaller details like this. Some shadowing on the on some of the details here, and then you can also keep working your way over. So I'm going to try to do that. And for the windows, I usually leave.
some light in the windows on the glass panes of the window just to kind of give it that tr feeling of uh, bright light. And I'm working my way around. And again, with the ink in the wash, you just dip in, tap the ink off, or just take a little bit of it. So there's just a little bit of ink on the pen. And we just keep going here. Now these are the darks of the windows on the shade side of this building. And you can see I'm just working. Now that we're doing a larger window here, I'll need more ink, which means I just have to keep going in and getting more ink quicker. Or, you know, the larger the area that you need to add your ink, you just have to keep going back in, doing the same process, dip it in, tap a little bit off. Sort of like when we do our watercolors with the brush, we go in, get our water, tap a little bit off the brush, the water, so we have that same technique going here. Ink on the pen, the bamboo pen, tap it off a little. There, and then uh, have fun with this. There's a doorway there, maybe a doorway here. Be scribbly about it, no big deal. You don't have to be perfect at all. Okay, so that's... And you can see we worked our way around pretty well. Um, I have additional space on my board, as you can see to the right, so that I can lean on this and then reach out over so I don't lean into this ink here that's still drying. It's drying pretty quickly, but I'll keep my hand on the out bo outer, outer border, and then I can go in here and do a couple shade. Some of the shade on this roof here. And again, I'm very aware, I look at where I'm going to rest my hand on my page just to make sure I'm not leaning into any ink. So I didn't paint any ink in here so far, I left that open. Maybe I can go up here and do a little more shading over here. And maybe there's a window here. And a door here, maybe. And now we can do some of our figures. Let's do a couple figures here. Again, these are very fun figures, playful. 
very loose gestural, you know, nothing we're not trying to get to. I connect those two figures there a little bit just to make them look a little more pleasant and we have another figure over here and then maybe we'll do a few more figures here too as well and then we just make these smaller over here so that they're this uh, gives us the feeling of uh, that things are getting smaller that as they go into the picture so these figures here are a little smaller and uh, And I'll make a few directional lines here and there. Some shadows underneath some of these bushes in the distance here. And then a couple of little, you know, little up, uh, up strokes here, you know, marks, up, upward marks just to give the feeling of some weeds and grasses and things. And we're coming along pretty good here. We have, again, just some directional lines going into the painting. And the, the darks are looking pretty good now. We have plenty of those uh, Darks in where the windows are and some of the shadowing under the bushes and the figures. Now I would say we can probably, I would say, um, let's try to do these. Since this is a uh, India ink, once it dries, it won't reactivate if you paint over it with watercolor. So when you're painting your watercolor, washes over the top of this, as long as this, this ink is 100% dry, it's not going to reactivate for you, so you'll have no problem. You can just paint washes over this and none of this will run at all. So that's a really good thing with India ink and with doing ink and wash. You really have a fun time because you can really get your important details with your darks in and then once you paint over it, you're not going to really have any issues with the um, darker uh, ink reactivating and causing an issue. So I'm going to, I still see a few more things we can do. So here there's some shadows over here on these chimneys and the chimney pots over here. And I'm not going super heavy with the shadowing on these. Maybe. Now I'm going to do some of these. Telephone poles and telephone lines. I can still see some, I'm going to wait now and let this dry. I might even use a blow dryer to dry off what I see here. The main thing is you really now, now that we're finishing up with our ink portion, um, 
really make sure it's 100% dry before you would go in and start leaning on anything to finish up. The reason I say that is we're going to do these larger telephone poles here and some of these there's two uh, large telephone poles here, one and two. And then there's telephone lines here. That won't be a problem. But to get these telephone poles in here, these large ones, we're going to have to lean on our paper to do that, to get those uh, long vertical poles in. So before we start leaning down into this other area that we've completed, let's make sure that's 100% dry. If you wait a couple hours, it should be fine, but sometimes ink will puddle and you won't see it. You have to really look closely at it. Does that make sense? Look really closely at your paper under good light to make sure that there's no puddles or anything like that on your paper when you're going to go back in to do another wash. So let's take a break. We'll make sure this is 100% dry before we come in again, and then we'll finish up. We'll get our telephone lines in, our telephone poles, um, and then you'll see that... Um, It'll be well worth letting this dry 100% or using a blow dryer to make sure that everything is completely dry. Then, boom, we go back in and get our final um, telephone poles and telephone lines in, and then we could start our watercolor washes. Okay, so that'll be fun, too. So let's stick around. We'll finish up in just a second with our ink. Okay, we let our ink dry. Everyone, did you let your ink dry? Did you make sure? Definitely check it. Look at, look close, up close to your paper. Um, we want to make sure now that all of our ink is dry 100%. We'll, we'll start doing the washes now. Um, then once we're done with all the watercolor washes, those dry pretty quick. So maybe after we're done with that, we'll let that dry. And then we'll do some final touches with some more ink. Or we can even uh, use a brush in our ink, too. So you can cr be creative about this. Does that make sense? If you want to do some of your details with ink and a brush, you can use, instead of using an ink pen everywhere, you can use maybe an ink pen or bamboo ink pen. You can use that in certain locations, and then you can use a brush. Uh, we'll use a, a needlepoint brush to do some of our lines with ink. So we will do that. And maybe I will use a brush. I'm not sure yet on the other, some other things, other details, but... We're pretty much looking real good here. We, we're ready to put some washes on. Now with this, I would say I'm using a, uh, this is a 12 um, watercolor brush. So I'm going to use a pretty large brush to uh, start putting in the uh, washes. And I'll start with the sky washes. And um, we'll see where how that works out. It should be fine. We'll do our sky washes. Let's... Uh, some French ultramarine blue, uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna in there, just to have a little maybe grayish color, a little bit of cobalt blue, maybe some cerulean blue as well, maybe a little bit of uh, raw umber. Let's make our sky colors very interesting, exciting. Some gray mixtures in there too. We don't want to be boring about this. And you'll see, I'm just going to dab it on. I'll go in and get some French ultramarine blue. And again here, we're going to want to work somewhat uh, quickly. We don't want to, uh, you know, take too much time with this. Let's, let's get our washes in. We'll go around the roof. And this is fun too. This is um, this is uh, this is uh, satin paper, Arches satin. So this really. When everything dries, it looks really, really good. It almost has like a crackly look to it. So I'm going around the chimneys here and the chimney pots. I'll go right into the to the bushes there and the trees. And again, uh, having some fun with this, uh, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre toward the bottom of the sky. 
but still with the blue, we want to go with the blue. And this is the fun about watercolor. You know, it looks great when you even are just doing like fun washes like this and, you know, mixing some colors around and it just has a great quality to it. So, you know, we don't have to worry about technique all that much here. We're just going to, we'll mix in some greens on our second wash. So this will be our first wash, our light wash. So we'll do a glazing technique here. And then we'll mix some of that blue down into the street here. And you can see how we can go over our figures. We can go over our figures. They're in ink and they're completely dry, so that really is something that's fun about ink and wash. You can put down these great marks with the ink, let it dry 100%, and then you can just have fun with the washes and go right over everything and you'll see that it really looks great. And that looks fine. There's a little bit of a uh, couple splashes. Okay, and then we could put in some washes for our brick. Burnt sienna, maybe a touch of alizarin and crimson, a little bit of cadmium red. And again, I'm going to once we're, I'm working in some purple to that too as well. And then, so this will be our brick wash here. And again, we make it more exciting with some alizarin crimson. And then to the same thing with the brick chimneys up there. So have some fun, add some interesting colors so that uh, some cadmium red too as well. That's a very aggressive color. It moves, moves pretty. It moves around pretty fast. Like if you put down some. Uh, Cadmium red, it tends to really flow fast on the watercolor paper, so sometimes you have to be careful if it's near other washes that are um, still damp. And I'll put some wash over here on this chimney, and we'll do these other chimneys over here. I'm trying to use the border of my paper to rest my hand so I don't rest into the sky wash. Okay, so we got some brick colors here on this brick building. And then our chimneys, red brick chimneys over here. That looks fine. Uh, I think we're pretty much good. I think maybe we'll put some more red brick over here on this chimney. And that looks pretty good. For our red brick color. Then we'll make some yellow ochre. Over here, some yellow ochre. And we'll kind of mix that around too over here.
and maybe the same thing over here, some yellow ochre. We'll use these as maybe some maybe a raw umber, yellow ochre, raw umber, maybe a little nice warm looking building here. And again, having fun with the washes. I'm using a large brush so we can cover a lot of ground. This is the first lighter wash, our first glazing. We're gonna go over it with a darker wash after this with some more shadows. But this looks pretty good. It's coming along and some I'm just getting some of that, some of the reddish um, washes um, onto the ground here. And if, we'll put shadows here too. We're going to go over with a darker wash with some shadows and things, but for right now this looks pretty good. Uh, maybe over on this building here, we're going to leave this building maybe white. Maybe we'll go with a green roof. Let's go with a green roof, maybe some olive, olive green with a little bit of viridian. Make it a cooler, kind of a cool green. And if you go over an area, no problem, you take a tissue and just, you can blot up sometimes if you go over a, like an area, like a border, let's say that you find you've gone over a little bit. You could also leave it too, that's not always a problem. And this is what I was saying before with the cadmium red. It, um, when I added that cadmium red to the damp paper over here, you can see how it, it kind of uh, infiltrated into the other washes, the other damp washes around the uh, chimney here. So again, just something to keep in mind when you do mix in your cadmium reds or your cadmium orange, cadmium yellow. Cadmiums are <clears throat> chemically, they just react a little different to the other colors and they they will again infiltrate into other washes if they're damp nearby so but it looks kind of good it's I don't mind the uh, little bit of the mixing there that's not a big deal Then maybe a little alizarin, alizarin crimson, just a little, because we're going to go over these areas with shadow. So if I put some alizarin crimson here and then I go over with like a purple or a blue, that'll look really good. And uh, same with over here. And maybe again a little more. And again, um, <clears throat> this 
area here we can just blot up a little bit like that. And we can go in, we'll get, we'll get some of the, let's do some of the distant. These are some of the distant bushes and things. And as they get closer, we'll make them a little warmer with some And maybe some blue in there too. So I'm just doing these bushes here. I'll go around. Some splashes here and there. I'll put some uh, purple as well because we're going to use purple for our, for our shadows so let's keep those same colors going throughout so I'll take that purple and I'll go in and do some shadowing with that we're going to do some shadowing here and there with uh, purple and blue maybe some Okay, looks good. And you can fix up figures too if you want. Once they're you're, you're completely 100% done with the painting, you can fix up little areas, you know, uh, that you might need to uh, add some ink or so forth or shadows or colors, anything you want. You can always, uh, when you're finishing up your painting, you can look and, and figure out some things you might want to add to it. But um, th the less you can kind of add toward the end, the better. I would just add anything that really is obviously like you know you want to change something, that is fine. But to keep adding and adding and adding, that, that tends to be a problem. Usually it makes the painting look uh, very much overworked and uh, less, uh, you know, fun and, and, and uh, pleasing. So, all right, we're going to let this dry now. We've got this, well, all these washes we put in carefully. We started with the sky, as you saw. Worked everything through. Some, you know, brick colors, green rooftops here. Some uh, nice, good-looking yellow ochre and warm washes for this building on the left and some over here too as well and um, this we're going to leave white uh, this will be like a white stucco type uh, building so we'll kind of have a mixture of interesting things as we go let's take another break um, I think once we come back we're going to work on 
uh, a few more washes of shadows here with some purple and blues to get some interesting, good, strong shadowing in the picture. And then after that, we'll let that dry. And then we'll come in and we'll do our final telephone poles here, this one here, and this one here, and some of the wires, the telephone wires that go across just to finish everything up. And that should be a completed painting. So please stick around here. Let's finish up, you know, keep going, take breaks. We're taking breaks now. And uh, again, too, I always re remember to mention, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, just below, uh, just below down here on the bottom of the screen, you'll see a red uh, button, subscribe. Um, this way you can see our new videos that come out every week. We're doing the same uh, style all the time with watercolor, but we, we just changed our subject matter. So one week we're doing seascapes, another week we're doing street scenes like this. Maybe we add in some ink and wash occasionally, which we do. So you'll see that we use a, a lot of different uh, techniques and methods within the watercolor medium here. So I hope you'll continue to watch and learn. Have a great time. And uh, again, we'll be right back. We're just going to take another break and we'll uh, get back and do one more good uh, darker wash, our second glazing or second wash, uh, as, if you will. And then that'll be pretty much close to the finish. And then we'll continue on. All right. So I will be right back and we'll see you in just a second. All right, we've let everything dry. All our washes are dry to the touch, fine. And we'll start our darker washes now. Let's, uh, I'll just wet a paper towel and we'll just clean up our palette a little bit. And I poured some fresh water in my water bucket and we're going to continue with our number 12 um, watercolor brush. And we're going to mix a ultramarine violet. I'll put some uh, ultramarine violet. This will be a darker uh, French ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. And uh, this way we can have a little bit of some darker mixtures in there too as well. Maybe a little bit of um, some lizard and crimson in there too. So we'll have a nice mixture of shadows. Mostly though, French ultramarine, uh, ultramarine violet. And then I'm just gonna, this is the shadow of the building. And let's, let's do a nice shadow on the building. And then we'll carry that shadow right into the foreground here. And this way we'll have the shadow of the building here. We'll add in some raw sienna just to get some bit of warmth in there. Then we'll, I should have probably had a little more ultramarine violet today, but I think we can get, make that work. And let's see now, let's make a, we're going to do some shadowing over here. This could be a mystery shadow. Maybe it's another building over on the right. That's making a shadow across here and then also two let's go with another shadow here so 
So we just put in a couple mystery shadows. We and then here as well, we're going to put a shadow under there. Underneath the eave of that roof. We're going to do some shadowing over here. shadow over here. That looks really good, the uh, shadowing of the various uh, buildings and features, and then we add a little bit of extra shadowing and a few locations here and there. We have some more trees over here. Just filled in some of these trees over here, and these are more distant trees. And we'll do a couple splashes for those trees over here over here as well. And that looks pretty good. The only thing we'll do is we'll let this dry again, this wash, the, our shadow washes here, the purple. Um, we'll let this purple shadow wash dry and then we're going to come in and we're going to do those large uh, communication poles, the telephone poles here. There's about three, one here, one here, one here, and then some wires uh, that go from the different uh, telephone poles across the picture. And that'll give us more of a finished look to everything. And um, so let's do that. Let's let this dry, though, the uh, purple uh, shadow wash. And we'll come right back and uh, finish up. Okay, we let our purple washes, our shadow washes dry. We took a break. And uh, I also found an, a, a brush, a, uh, actually it's an oil brush. Um, we're gonna do, I have some ink. So I have my ink well again. We'll do the telephone lines and the telephone poles. So here I have my uh, medium size round brush. I dip it into to the ink. And then I just dry off a little bit of the ink off the brush. I don't want to have a brush s soaked with ink, just enough to 
get our telephone pole in without too much uh, ink. So let's, you can always add, uh, you can always add some ink to your painting. But if you add too much to start with, then it's, it can, it can make a, you know, a lot of marks and, and mess that you, you can't lift up because ink is pretty much uh, very difficult to lift up. So that's why I dried off my brush on paper towel first, making sure I have a lot of the excess ink off my brush. And you can see the brush is pretty dry now. Then we'll take a small piece of wood I have here and I'm gonna carefully keep my wood stick here straight. And then I take my brush and hold it right along side And then I'm just going to go down and lightly touch, like that. Looks good. Okay, that looks fine. Now we will um, get. A, we'll take a smaller brush now. We'll do the same thing we just did. We'll take a smaller brush, though, a smaller round brush. And I have the small round brush and I dip it into some ink and then I make sure I dry off the brush like that so that there's not too much ink on that. And then we're going to do this over here, this. So I just ride the brush alongside the And once I get that main portion in, do the same thing. You dip it into the ink, dry it off a little, and then carefully, not leaning into any of the ink we just put in here, we can just I'll finish up that like so. Just make sure I carefully get that. Here I can use some more ink. I would like to keep the left side of this telephone pole darker and let the light be on the right side. So that's where the light's coming from, the right side, so I just want to make sure I have that accurate. And then here we have the cross, cross members of the... So I just go across like so. Another one here, there's a couple diagonal. And there we have it. Then here we use a very like so. So we have another And some more details for the... There's little glass isolators on the tops of these poles. Helps the electricity. A couple 
shadows there. And then I think we will use our um, needlepoint brush. And I'll just take the ink, put it into the uh, to the palette, and then we'll we'll have some fun here. We're just going to go right across the page. And the main thing is here, just have them free flowing the wires. Not, not a tremendous amount, you know, just a couple here and there. I'll kind of take a couple practice runs here. So I'm going to go from this to here. So That looks good, just enough, you know, a few here and there, not too many. That looks pretty good. And I think that's good. Now if we did more, I do see a couple things. We could add a few, like um, maybe a few. Some uh, branches over here and over here. So I think if we add a couple of those small branches, It adds some more variety to it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. This is just a real fun composition to do to uh, loosen up. This is a great loosening up type of uh, painting you can do. Like if you find your paintings are really t tight and you have a hard time with kind of just being more loose and carefree with your watercolors, this is a great uh, composition to do because it's just fun, free, you get in your basic sketch, uh, and then from there you just add in your uh, your ink washes, and then you go over everything with your uh, watercolor washes, and then from there you just add in your final details of whatever calligraphy you'd like to use with your um, ink. You know, those final details we did here with the um, some twigs and branches and some telephone lines on our t uh, telephone poles to add in some more uh, details, but this is really just something fun to really f free yourself up, have fun with it, no pressure. And again, we're here all the time. Please subscribe. <clears throat> uh, we make these type of videos every week, and so you can come by and enjoy. If you're subscribed, you'll be notified when our new videos come out, and then we'll have fun. We'll, we'll paint, we'll draw, and we'll uh, have an exciting time, and maybe we'll just take our tape off our painting here, and we'll zoom in but you can really see how it looks uh, finished when we take our tape off. That border looks really, really good. And uh, just a nice, fun composition to do. Not too much color mixing either. We just did simple color mixes.
All right, everyone, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.